It's Tuesday. Actually, it's Tuesday afternoon. I have no idea what the date is. I really gotta start paying attention to that. And welcome to my vlog. Well, I just came outside for a cigarette before I go back inside and make something to eat. It's like quarter to one. I haven't done shit today. I literally just got out of bed. I really gotta quit doing that, going to bed so late that night. Even the last night I finished editing and I said, yeah, I'm gonna go to bed at like 1.30. That didn't happen, I just tossed and turned. Tonight might be a different story, but we'll see. Still no camera batteries in the mail. I'm waiting for the batteries for the uh, Canon that I'm using right now, and definitely the car charger, so that uh, when I go to Pugs this weekend, I can have all extra power. He wants me to do the great Canadian appliance jump, but I don't know how brave I am for that. Probably end up breaking something, and well, I kind of need my body functional, right? But, uh, yeah, he wants me to do the great Canadian appliance jump. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Could be fun, but, uh, definitely have to make sure that I get a lawn chair that won't fold in half, eh? Something that can hold me up. Not quite sure what else is going on today, but I'll keep you guys updated. Like I said, I got to work at four, so that sucks. Still haven't gotten the paint for the garage door. Never went out on Sunday because I got my phone and then went over to visit Cap Hiss and you know how it is. I did get an information from a guy at work last night and this is kind of interesting. He's going to Miskaming to buy some beer. Apparently you can get 65 cans of Coors beer for like 30 bucks. And apparently these cases are really cool because it's 65 cans in a cardboard insulated case. And in the center there's a hole and you just pour ice right in the hole and it vents the, uh, the cold all around. So that's kind of cool. For like 30 bucks for 65 cans of beer. Even if it is Coors Light and it doesn't get me drunk, it's not bad. It's a pretty good deal. So I'm going to make a trip up to Tamang. Not today, but I don't know when. It's pretty far out there. I'm not sure how long it takes to get there, but you got to go into Quebec. So well, I'm going to head her back inside and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Well, for breakfast, I'm going to have myself, or I should say for lunch because it's uh, almost 1 o'clock. I'm going to make myself some steak and eggs. These steaks the girlfriend bought were kind of shitty because they're all frozen together. That's why it looks like ass. But uh, speaking of ass, so I have steak and eggs. I'm going to fry up these flash fries and friggin' just have at her. But uh, they're all stuck together because they suck like that. But I don't know, maybe if I would have let them thaw out or something, I don't know. But I'm going to fry up these, fry up some eggs. I don't know what else I'm going to make with it. Haven't thought that far ahead, but I am friggin' starved. So this should hopefully hold me over for a bit. And yeah, we'll go from there. Friggin' right, steak and eggs. Breakfast of champions, I should say lunch. So I'm gonna go eat this, see what's new on the YouTubes, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Well, I'm just out here in the garage having a cigarette, and there's something that uh, kind of sort of sparked up in my brain here. Um, a lot of the vloggers that I follow, like besides Shea Carl and CTFXC, like, I mean the uh, starting up vloggers and people who are basically just, you know, just started up recently. Um, they're between the ages of, I'd say, about 20 and 25. So they're still going to school, still going to college. And watching those videos reminded me of when I was in college. See, because in Canada you can get OSAP, which is like, it's like a student loan basically. So they, they give you, uh, I should say they loan you. They don't give you anything, that's for sure. They loan you money so that you can go to school. But if your parents made too much money, then they wouldn't give you the student loan and they expected your parents to pay for your school. Well, that's the situation I was in. So when I was in school, I was also working full-time hours, but not full-time at Walmart. But let me tell you, $7.10 an hour at 40 hours a week, plus going to school, plus doing homework, it just didn't cut it. So you had to come up with other ways to make money. So I did a couple greasy things when I was in school to make money. One of my biggest greasiest things I've ever done was uh, bootlegging cigarettes. Yeah, the old native cigarettes. Started off with just buying a carton. A uh, pack of smokes at the reserve is four bucks. A carton of uh, uh, a carton has ten packs of cigarettes in it. So you're looking at you know forty dollars for a carton. So I'd turn around and sell a pack of cigarettes for six dollars, making two dollars profit. So I did that, and you know one carton turned into two cartons, two cartons turned into four cartons, four into eight, and next thing you know I'm showing up at the school with a box of cigarettes in my trunk, with 16 cartons of cigarettes, and selling up by the end of the day. So that's like making 80 bucks a day pretty much, like just pure profit. And uh, 
actually a lot more than that I was actually bringing in a lot of money I think the one year I paid my tuition I actually walked in there and they'll take cash check credit debit and I walked in there and just dropped a lot of cash on the table from selling cigarettes all my books paid for cash and just from you know selling cheap cigarettes in the reserve uh, from the reserve on campus now it was majorly uh, it wasn't illegal but it was kind of pissing off the Dean because they were getting reports from the store, the campus store, that cigarette sales have gone down big time because I was pulling people in because the university and Canada are linked. So I was pulling in people from both sides, from Canada and uh, Nip uh, and then the university. And cigarette prices or cigarette sales at the store started to dwindle big time, but I was just friggin' booming. Uh, that was one of the greasy things I did, but then I had to start laying down low because the dean was trying to find who was selling cigarettes because I never sold to uh, professors. Well, I sold to one professor, but that guy was cool as shit, so that's why he used to come down to the to the college bar with us before math class and drink beers and he'd always buy so he was cool as shit so I always sold him cigarettes and sometimes I just gave him free packs whatever the other way I made money was I had an old condemned pop machine in the uh, student lounge nobody was running it so I went and talked to the uh, students uh, was it students uh, I don't know, some sort of like a, a social committee for the students and I asked them, I said, what are you guys doing with that pop machine? They said, oh, that doesn't belong to us. That belongs to Reese's. So I contacted Reese's and said, what are you doing with the pop machine in the D-wing of Canador? And they said, ah, nothing. We're thinking about just leaving it there. We have no use for it. I said, well, can I rent it? And they're like, well, if you want to, sure. What's the cost? And they said, 20 bucks a month because we don't even care about it. And I said, all right, I'm coming to pick up the key. I went and picked up the key. Went to a, uh, a, a grocer, uh, this, we got this, we had a place in town called National Grocers. It was like a wholesale food vendor for businesses. So like Mike's Marts and like corner stores can go there and buy like bulk buys of chips and pop and those like uh, Twinkies and stuff like that. So I went there and bought a whole shitload of, of pops and loaded up the machine and turned it back on. Now, pop machine in the cafeteria was selling a bottle of pop for a buck twenty-five. I was selling mine for seventy-five cents, still making twenty-five cents per bottle of pop. I couldn't keep that machine full. Every day I had to reload it. I was making a friggin' killing off of that. Well then, sure enough, the student social committee found out about it and they wanted a piece of the cake because when they found out how much cash I was bringing in and because it was my own little enterprise, my own little business, they didn't like that because the money wasn't going back into the school while well, it was because I was using it to pay my tuition and shit. They kind of got upset and tried to shut me down. It took them uh, seven months. I, I ran it for five months, no problems. Seven months after that, they, they finally shut me down. So I ran that for like a year. I ran that my second year in college and I got shut down in my third year. They took it over and they jacked the prices up, which sucked because all they did was they basically told me I couldn't have the pot machine in the school. Um, I had for, like We fought for a while with them on that. And finally they said, you know what? You're not paying for the lounge. They pulled that technicality on me. Basically, they said that they never authorized me to use the lounge as my little personal store. Yet, I had, in the beginning, I had the dean's permission. But then when they realized how much revenue I was bringing in, they revoked it. So I just called Reese's and had the pop machine pulled. And they put their own pop machine in there at a buck twenty-five. That really pissed off the students. Because uh, I was paying 50 cents per bottle. And I made sure everybody knew that how bad the store was gouging so they might have won the battle but I pissed off the entire student committee and <laughs> good time so I, d I used to do that you know and once that was said and done uh, then basically I just made it through my college years by working at Walmart racking up a student uh, student not even a student line of credit just a line of credit just to get through my final years and then I got the job where I'm at now and haven't looked back but uh yeah there's definitely ways you can make money in college sometimes you got to get greasy and do some semi-illegal things like selling native reserve cigarettes and <laughs> i wouldn't recommend selling drugs or alcohol or anything like that because then you're getting big shit but um you know, little little low key things. That's what I was doing, and it worked out fine for me. You know, there's other things you can do. Like if you're a computer technician, like I am. Like I did a lot of tech work at the school for people because our uh, our technical guy, who was supposed to help us with our laptops if we had problems, was a complete moron. The guy couldn't friggin' troubleshoot his way out of wet paper bag. Let me tell you. So I used to do that on the side, fix people's computers, and because I had hookups with some uh, at cost dealer parts. 
I could get parts for laptops and this is back then when you bought your laptop you only had a 90 day warranty at the store unless you bought an IBM then you had a one year ship it out to us we'll fix it warranty. Yeah I used to do that too. I used to fix people's computers and troubleshoot software problems and all that. I think one of the greasiest things I ever did that I actually got caught for and almost got friggin expelled from college was in our first year we had an accounting course. You know I hate accounting. I, I friggin dreaded accounting. But there was a part of the course that was done on the computer where it was a program. And the program basically all you had to do was complete the program. Even if you got all the answers wrong, as long as you made it to the end, you got a D grade in accounting. Minimal. And a D was enough to pass. So what I went ahead and did was I wrote a program that would quickly rush me through the entire thing overnight. And then when it generated the final score... The score sheet at the end <laughs> i uh, wrote another program that would modify it so uh let's say some other guy came up to me and said hey dude i want to get this over with now well all it would do is finish his it would basically generate the same certificate but with his name his student number and different answers so it looked like he actually did it it looked legit and it only took me five seconds to do well i was selling people degrade uh accounting uh, uh accounting degrades minimal at 10 bucks a pop and yeah i sold a hundred of those people just hating them hating the accounting so they'd come to me and be like all right here's 10 bucks do it and i'd do it and it worked great until uh somebody decided to be all rat and rat me out so i had to go in front of the dean and they're like you what you did was very fraudulent blah 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 what were you thinking and then i flat out told them i said what were you guys thinking giving a program like this for us to do work and telling us as long as we complete it if it's right or wrong doesn't matter we're going to pass accounting because a lot that was a lot of the problems that people had in that course was passing accounting because we didn't give a shit about crunching numbers all we wanted to do is write software because that's what i went for was computer programming systems analyst so i argued with them for a bit and we bounced back and forth and finally he said he goes you're under academic probation which basically means 80 percent or less and you're out of the course um, um, that's an average not on per grade so you had to hit 80 percent or higher or they revoked your student abilities of going to that school and nobody else got in shit and then i found out who it was and well i son of a bitch them pretty good but i'll get into that on another day so yeah there's greasy things you can do to make money in school it's probably legal things you can do too but i was more interested in the greasy stuff because the greasy stuff usually paid out well and you can always do the real greasy stuff but that, that stuff there if you get caught you might be looking at prison well that just sucks I don't know. I figured I would share those stories with you because it was funny because I made a comment about uh, making money in college on uh, SADAVX's uh, blog because she's in college right now. And uh, I've been getting some comments back. I kind of hijacked her comment thread. People are like, dude, how are you making money? Or how were you making money? So I figured, you know what? That might be a funny story to share in the blog. So I figured, you know what? I'm going to share it with my viewers and let them know how greasy I was back in the day. So now you know. And knowing's half the battle. I really gotta quit saying that. Anywho guys, I'm gonna head her back inside and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Well it's about quarter after three. I just came outside for a quick cigarette and let dog out before I had her into work. And I don't know what he's doing. Something caught his interest over there. My grass is just cocked. Oh that's what it was. See, last night Oreo kind of ate a moth. I guess he really enjoyed it. So now every time he sees a moth he darts for it and he really wants to eat it. So me it was when Felix ate a shad fly. He loves the taste of shad flies for some reason. So yeah, well, I'm up for a quick smoke. Then I'm gonna head her off to work. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys uh, once I get there. So peace. Well, it's work time, so I'm gonna head her in. I brought my HP touchpad with me. <coughs> and let's do this. Oh, that burp tasted like steak. Yeah. stop is gone. I replaced it with this thing. So now we have a new butt stop. Sweet. Anywho, I'm heading inside so I'll talk to you guys later. Well it's eight o'clock at night. Not too much going on so far. The shift's been very very easy which is a definite bonus. And yeah I'm thinking about uh, 
I gotta go to the store and get something to eat because I forgot to pack a lunch. So I'm probably gonna do that. Luckily there's no wind right now, which is really odd. So yeah, I'm gonna go to the store and get something to eat and then head back in. So, like I said, there's not much going on tonight. It's been a really easy shift. Nothing big at all happening. So far it's been slow, but uh, next week's back to school, so you know it's gonna pick up again. Anywho, I'll talk to you guys after if I have something to report in on at 10.30. And if not, well, I'll talk to you at midnight. So I'll talk to you later. Alrighty, look at that. Five after 12, and let's see if I'm going for coffee with Rex. Looks like I'm going for coffee with Rex. I just texted him, he's over at uh, Lakeshore, and uh, I'm gonna go over there. So I'll show you guys the Dicker Drive so you can see what kind of bullshit I have to go through just to go over there because the overpass is still cocked. Let's go. Well guys, I'm home now and it's about two in the morning. I didn't film much at the Hortons. Actually, I didn't film anything at the Hortons. Uh, we were just hanging out and talking YouTube talk and other stuff and junk and yeah, good times. Death Radio was there. Um, I think I've mentioned him before. Check his channel out. It'll be in the link below. But uh, yeah, well, Death Radio and Rex 4x4. I'll put their links below. I think I've son of a bitch Rex 4x4 enough though, but I'll put his link down there anyway if you want to check it out. And um, pretty sure I'm going to shut the vlog down here, go in and edit it, get it up to the YouTubes, and then uh, call it a night. I got a wicked headache. My brain wants to fall out my ears again. So hopefully tomorrow Barky lets me sleep in a bit. Probably won't because he's a jackass, but you know. That's just the way dogs are. So, on that note, I'm going to shut the vlog down here. So if you like today's video and any of the shenanigans I talked about, <laughs> go ahead and leave a, uh, a like button presage. I don't even know what the hell I'm saying anymore. I'm so friggin' out of it. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond. Till next time, keep on vlogging.